Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. In this video, I'm going to be discussing my favorite game of 2021. There's no particular reason I waited this long to do it, mostly just been busy, so let's get right into it. Uh -uh. No more than 10 hours of gaming per day. How dare you? So, video games have been a part of my life for about as long as I can remember. They've influenced me a lot, ranging from my taste in music, my favorite style of visuals, my sense of humor, and so on. Growing up, I wasn't allowed to play anything not meant for kids, as my parents were very strict about that sort of thing, and in retrospect, for probably good reasons. But when I was around 10 or 11 or so, in 2010, I'd gotten super into watching videos and playthroughs of games on YouTube. I discovered a lot of games and YouTubers that would come to influence my general style of humor and the way I carried myself online. This is also how I discovered the series that we will be talking about today, that being No More Heroes. Around that age, No More Heroes 2 had come out and I'd seen it everywhere at places like Game Stops and various Walmarts at the game selection. And as I got curious, I looked more and more into it. I was shocked to see a game, especially on Nintendo hardware, be so brutal and bloody and insane. I mean, the protagonist swears. <laughs> it flew my tiny kid brain for real. Fast forward through the years and I was able to get my own money and with that I was basically in full control of what I got to play and didn't have to run it by my parents anymore or anything of that sort. And I finally played No More Heroes 1 and 2 after ordering it online and watching all those playthroughs for years and having a huge interest in the series as a whole. Before I continue on I just wanted to say if you want to support my content consider supporting me on Patreon. For five bucks a month you get early access to my videos before they come out and you get your names in the credits of the video. So if that sounds cool to you, consider doing so. But if you can't afford to do so or simply don't want to, that's okay. Liking and subscribing is more than enough anyway. So, back to the video. Now, I know this has all just mostly been anime backstory leading up to what we're talking about today, but I needed to explain all of this to really give you all perspective on the weight the 2021 release sequel No More Heroes 3 holds to me. There was a spin-off game a couple years prior to this release that while I enjoyed wasn't exactly like the original series and still left me wanting more. Well, not to spoil anything, but in the end of the game, a preview and announcement that the dev team was working on No More Heroes 3 was there. If you remember, as I mentioned earlier, No More Heroes 2 released when I was about 11 in 2010 or so. No More Heroes 3, on the other hand, released now when I was 22 in 2021. I personally never even expected there to be another game in the series, as it, it had been so long, and it had been so niche for so long. It just didn't really seem plausible. Now is probably a good time for me to give proper context to everything and explain everything well to everyone who has no idea what this series is, who's behind it, and so on. So, let's get right into that. My recommended superfood is golden milk. No More Heroes is a series created by Goichi Suda, better known as Suda51, a man who is nothing short of a legend, who, with his company Grasshopper Manufacture, have made a bunch of cool ass games you've probably heard of, such as Let It Die, Killer Is Dead, Lollipop Chainsaw, Shadows of the Dam, the 25th Ward, The Silver Case, and Killer7, just to name a few. And while not the director for all of these, Suda was the writer for a majority of the games listed here. The man is fucking insane, and it's that insanity that created the No More Heroes series. Now onto the games themselves. Try aerial yoga to stay fit. No More Heroes 1 is a hack and slash game for the Wii released in America on January 22nd, 2008 and follows our protagonist Travis Touchdown, the cheesily and titular No More Hero as he becomes an assassin and climbs the ranks to hopefully score and bang the woman running the organization that holds the assassin rankings. It's about as strange and out there as it sounds. Travis is nothing short of a fucking dork and nerd with a bunch of anime merch around his house, a beam katana he ordered off of eBay as his weapon of choice, luchador masks, and saying some random shit sometimes to sound cool. I'm gonna try my best not to spoil these games, because if any of this sounds even remotely interesting, the series as a whole is available on the Switch, including the spin-off. And that spin-off I would also recommend for the sake of story beats and such, but I'll get to that later. 
as well, if I'm not mistaken. Everything except No More Heroes 3 is available on Steam, but I've heard less than favorable things about that, so I will not go out of my way to comment on that. Especially since I myself have not played those versions. Eventually, after a lot of crazy drama and odd jobs and No More Heroes 1, Travis becomes the number one ranked assassin, which, given how it's structured and the fact that you are the protagonist, of course it was gonna happen. It just makes sense. That should come as a surprise to literally no one. Following that, No More Heroes 2 released on the Wii as well in America on January 26, 2010, and takes place after Travis takes a long absence of being an assassin despite reaching the top. And after some rather unfortunate happenings that kickstart the story, Travis returns to the world of being an assassin. Albeit as fucking stupid and horny as ever. No More Heroes 2 is basically more of the same with the craziness factor cranked up a significant amount and a bit more on the side of glorifying the whole assassin gig featured in these games, although not fully. There's also some changes in gameplay, but it's kind of up to you to decide whether or not it's good or bad. I'm not here to tell you, quite frankly. But eventually, Travis climbs to the top and defeats the big baddie once more and saves the day. Although, this time on a far more somber note, and believe me, that is a huge simplification of everything. One general overarching theme and happening to Travis throughout the series as a whole is that him being an assassin and everything relating to what he does even though it helps him get towards his goal of pussy and I guess fame and power or whatever, also comes at the price of the people around him that he loves constantly being in danger, thus leading to him resent what he does more and more throughout the series. The climax of this is in the spin-off of the series, Travis Strikes Again No More Heroes, which released in 2019, and sees a Travis that has abandoned the big city life and those around him for the most part to fuck off and live on his own and away from everyone. Presumably so everything stops turning to shit because of those that may want him dead, or some vengeance someone may have against him. Speaking of which, exactly that happens when the father of one of the assassins Travis killed in the first game finds him after wanting to get revenge on the man that did so. Eventually, after a big ol' fight, the two get transported into a video game console. I won't get into much else relating to this spin-off as it features a boatload of lore and things relating to the series as a whole, and even a bunch of stuff relating to No More Heroes 3, but also it's pretty heavy spoilers for the most part, so you get the idea. I'm not gonna spoil it here for you, apologies if it sounds interesting and you want to hear more, but that's not what the video is about. Now, on to the good stuff. No More Heroes 3. Your lucky color is green. Released on the Nintendo Switch Worldwide on August 26, 2021, we find our good friend Travis Touchdown returning to the world of being an assassin. Not really, actually. This game is probably the least like the others in that sense. Travis in this game isn't really an assassin like he has been in the others. And the story starts off with a boy and his weird little fuzzy alien pal hanging out until said alien pal has to leave, but promises to return in 20 years. Well, turns out he wasn't fucking lying. 20 years pass and this boy is, is this weird fucking high executive CEO type dude of basically the whole area the game's taking place in and what do you know? His alien friend's back and back with a lot of other aliens as well. Oh god, what's he doing? Oh cool, he just wiped out a bunch of the population and he just killed the president on TV. Huh. That can't be good. Now I'm sure you're wondering where the fuck Travis falls into all of this. Well, he doesn't really. He kind of just gets woken up by all the explosions and crazy shit going on and ends up fighting a bunch of these weirdo aliens, including the first major boss. And after learning of Travis defeating his ally, Fu, our main villain and just resident fucking crazy dude, or alien I should say, decides to go after him himself. And what ends up happening is Travis and his allies getting completely fucking washed and even one of them fucking dying. This exact thing being why I mention this sort of thing happening to Travis a lot over the course of the series. And of course, with this, Travis wants to get his revenge and set things straight considering the damage his allies suffered. And so begins No More Heroes 3. Now that I'm done with all the general setup and everything in between, let me get on to the actual game itself and why it's my personal favorite game of 2021. Sweet Dreams when anything gets a sequel so long after the fact, I can't help but wonder and worry if it'll really live up to the expectations I've got in my head about it and how I want said sequel to be. 
It's pretty daunting, admittedly. On one hand, of course I wanted to know more Heroes 3. I love the franchise and Suda51's games. But on the other hand, what if it doesn't live up to the hype? What if it ends up being a blemish on the franchise? What if it isn't as good as the other games? I mean, sure, this isn't the end of the world if any of these things actually happen, but it's gonna be heavily disappointing, especially depending on the gap between sequels. In the case of No More Heroes 3, though, I can say that I was thoroughly surprised and shocked at just how much I enjoyed it. Now, despite the rough graphics and less than stellar frame rate in the overworld, which I'll just say outright is 1000% the fault of the Switch being such a stupidly underpowered system, and less so because of the game itself, I still enjoyed my time greatly. While everything looks weirdly shiny, there's still a lot of parts that look fucking cool and still manage to keep a general cool aesthetic going. Hell, the game is oozing in style. Every major boss battle begins with a literal opening with music, visuals, and credits, and after going through the entire section of all of that, you get a more mellow anime ending type of thing to wrap things up, with even a mock Netflix style next episode transition after the fact. Between major missions in this game, you even get Travis talking to one of his friends, almost like it's a podcast of sorts, about general pop culture and Japanese director Takashi Miike, who I would assume Suda51 is incredibly fond of considering just how much the two talk about him. One of my personal favorite bits in No More Heroes 3, which is more of a general series staple, is whenever you complete a mission or major boss, you get this flashy as fuck and insanely cool scene of everything turning red and the text going shows up as a sick ass guitar plays. It's so fucking satisfying. There's just a surprising amount of love that went into the visuals of this game as a whole, despite the somewhat lacking gameplay visuals. But in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't even ruin much of the experience. I mean, for me at least. I understand some folks do have higher standards for graphics more often than not, and the Switch does have its fair share of issues regarding this sort of thing, as it is so desperately underpowered, but for the most part, as long as the game is fun, I tend to not care much about the graphics. And this game is so fucking fun. Now, with the older games being Wii games, it would sometimes be a little difficult to get a good grasp and feel for how to control it and really get good with it. Sure, it wasn't impossible, but it wasn't the easiest thing in the world. And as the series has progressed, it's made some steps forward to improving the feel of gameplay, but also with some steps back. With 3, however, I feel it's the best the series has ever felt. I've never felt this in control of absolutely everything in the game than I have with this entry in the series. The gameplay is mostly just slash up these enemies in front of you, but unsurprisingly they're gonna try and fight back. Whether it be getting in the best timing to get an optimal amount of hits for taking down an enemy as soon as possible, or even just learning their moves as to dodge perfectly and get an opportunity to hit them with a flurry of hits, it all feels perfect. Despite this game having some serious performance issues in the overworld, anytime you are on a mission or boss battle, it's never not perfectly smooth. This is also why I don't mind the graphics or the hiccups in performance as much, because when it really matters most, the game is as smooth as it needs to be to make sure your actual own performance in the game is not hindered. I don't personally consider myself very good at games, and I never thought I was at least decent enough to go through any No More Heroes games on its hardest difficulties. But all the gameplay I've recorded for 3 you see here is on exactly that, the hardest difficulty. Hell, even in my spare time I've gone out of my way to try the one hit difficulty for boss rematches, although it's a varying success. But I've personally never felt this confident with my abilities in this series until this game in particular, and I feel that just comes down to how well executed it is. There's light and heavy attacks, there's grabs, but besides that, if you unlock it, you can get so much more. An extended dodge, a charge attack, more battery life on your beam katana. While previous entries did these sort of things as well, the combination of all of this as well as an added system where you can craft chips that boost your skills or boost one stat at the cost of lowering another, as well as a set of abilities where you can throw out extra attacks, a force field that slows enemies, force field that hits enemies, and even a drop kick. And all of this put together creates an experience that gives you endless possibilities for how you want to tackle fights, and it's all in your hands. Let me let you in on a little trick here. If you want to try out the one hit difficulty for boss rematches. Considering if you get hit you die, what you can do is craft yourself two chips that lower your defense but raise your attack and use them both at the same time. Since if you get hit, 
you die. It doesn't matter how nerfed your defense is, so all you get is a net positive in damage. I love it. On top of that, I also learned you can cancel some bosses' attacks basically by using your secondary abilities, such as the dropkick. This is all only my experimentation with it. I'm sure others have figured out even more optimized strats and such for this game. There's so much you can do and I love it. Whenever I get damaged, it never feels like the game is just bullshit. It feels as though, okay, I messed up and I got hit there. It's my fault. It doesn't feel like the game is just throwing shit at me that I can't do anything about because you absolutely can. And to wrap things up, I just want to talk more about how much passion comes through in this game. Super spicy foods will save the world. This game from start to finish feels like a passion project and something that the people involved with wanted to make more than anything. From the amount of outside sources brought in to help to work on the game, such as Bayonetta's character designer designing one of the characters, a character designed by Solanine and Goodnight Pun Pun creator Inio Asano, another character designed by the series art director of Borderlands, comic book artist Derek Robertson making the game's cover art, and probably a couple other things in there. There's so much raw talent put into this game. It's genuinely amazing. While the game itself is very all over the place and as jarring as it can get, it's nothing short of a spectacle and an amazing experience. There's so many references in here to pop culture that Suda51 probably loves the fuck out of. I couldn't list it all. They fucking mentioned like Marvel and Endgame at one point. There's like eight or nine different versions of the anime ending song featured after missions. A lot of bosses straight up have complete different types of gameplay, such as one being an actual JRPG battle fit with menus and Final Fantasy sounding music. The commitment the game and its creators had to the absurd and wacky bits featured is nothing short of astounding. It doesn't feel like they cut any corners on the visuals or gameplay in any way. It all comes together into a weird, freaky and absurd but beautiful, striking and crazy final product. That of which I consider to be my favorite game of 2021. I love No More Heroes, and I adore No More Heroes 3. Use tap water to cleanse yourself from the inside out. Now, before I wrap things up here, I want to say that I didn't go over the story of the game and any specifics relating to that beyond the initial hour or so, probably, or any criticisms I have towards it. Mostly because I just don't want to spoil it. Especially on the off chance I ever decided to make a more in-depth video on this game one day. I hope that makes sense, and I hope none of you are disappointed by that. This video is less so an in-depth view and review, and more so just a way for me to just talk about this game, and the love I've had for it ever since I played it last year when it came out. And, I mean, I'm glad I got to share it here. On a different note, this was not intended to be this month's video. I was putting together a video on an anime and manga I enjoy a lot, but that ended up taking a bit more time than I expected, so expect that next month, I suppose. And I hope this video was still enjoyable, despite me having to push back the other one. Regardless, as I mentioned earlier, if you want to support the channel, consider becoming a patron to get early access to these videos before they come out, and a spot in the video credits that you're probably seeing on the screen right now. Five bucks a month, that's all you gotta do. But if you can't, or don't want to, no worries. Leaving a like and subscribing is more than enough. With that though, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good one. Stay safe everyone, Bye bye